Okay, so uh, at a fairly high level, this, this slide kind of shows uh, um, the basics around STD manufacturing and, and um, uh, drug product intermediate characteristics. So the process, uh, again, at a high level is, is that the drug and, and polymer or sometimes um, additional excipients such as surfactants or, or high surface area supports um, are dissolved or suspended in an organic solvent. Um, or sometimes a solvent water mis uh, mixture, but of course the key being that it's a fairly volatile mixture, uh, and then and then that's spray dried into a through a nozzle um, into a drying chamber, and, and obviously there are um, a lot of different scales at which this process can be done, um, depending on the, the scale of sample that's going to be made. Um, and when it's done properly, uh, what you get, as it says, is a homogeneous, um, and stable, amorphous dispersion, um, which uh, it has characteristics, uh, you know, that are kind of shown on the right here. So, um, by thermal analysis, uh, differential scanning calorimetry, um, you see that you have a single single glass transition temperature, which is evident with evidence of no phase separation. Um, uh, you know, a uniform molecular dispersion. Uh, you know, no evidence of crystallinity by by other analyses such as powder X-ray microscopy, etc. Uh, and the morphology is is, is typically um, as shown in these scanning electron. Uh, microscopy images of, of sort of a collapsed sphere or a raisin-like morphology um, with fairly high surface area. Uh, and, and all of that, uh, again, when practiced properly, the, what it gives you is, is a substantial bioavailability enhancement relative to crystalline forms um, in that you get rapid dissolution in the intestinal uh, medium um, by virtue of, of the high surface area and the inclusion of a, of a polymer that's soluble in that medium. Uh, increased solubility relative to crystalline forms um, in that you've got a, an amorphous form rather than a, um, a lower energy crystalline form. And when practiced properly, um, um, which is to say choosing the right excipients and the right drug to polymer ratio, um, you can maintain, importantly maintain that supersaturation or that increased solubility um, in the intestinal tract and, and thus um, support um, substantially better absorption relative to you know, other forms like crystalline drug. Um, and again, we'll, we'll get into later uh, application of STDs into to solid dosage forms, um, uh, powder in a bottle, et cetera. Uh, so that's kind of a, a high level, and, and we'll go through a little more detail. Um, this is one slide on uh, kind of the physical uh, situation during spray drying, as it says. Um, I'm a chemist. I'm, I'm not a process engineer, and, and I won't go into great detail, a lot of um, engineering heavy slides, but, but this is um, kind of a useful one useful uh, slide, I think, to consider a few key attributes that we get asked about often. I um, mean, you know, why is spray drying a, a good process for um, amorphous dispersions for pharmaceutical applications? Um, one of the key things, as it says on the left there, is, is um, very fast and very mild exposure to, to high temperatures. So um, while there is a fairly high inlet temperature typically for spray drying, the, the product is effectively not exposed to that high temperature um, for any amount of time. Um, there's a very short residence time uh, on the order of milliseconds in which the droplet is actually in that hot region. Furthermore, there's evaporative cooling uh, during that time. So, so really the drug um, and the polymer, for that matter, if you will, don't see uh, a hot temperature like what you have at the inlet, and rather they, they simply are, are exposed to more like the, um, the outlet temperature, which oftentimes is on the order of 40 degrees. Um, so you don't get a lot of prolonged exposure to high temperatures. Um, Again, the drying process is very fast on the order of milliseconds. Uh, and so what that allows you to do is, is to trap, kinetically trap um, an amorphous dispersion very quickly so that you can operate in, in metastable regimes uh, that might be difficult to, to prepare um, a uniform dispersion by other kind of slower means. Um, and the, 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 the properties of the particles are, are quite tunable by, by process and, and, uh, and equipment selection so that you can you can tune the particle size, um, density, et cetera, um, to be amenable to, to different kinds of processing and presentations. Um, and then another key point is that uh, uh, the process is quite scalable and that, that um, you know, we can go everything from milligram scale up to metric tons. Um, and the, the science of scale there is, is, is quite well understood here now so that, so that it's a pretty seamless process. Uh, moving forward from kind of early formulation development to, to late stage uh, manufacturing. Um, 
So to that end, uh, what's on this slide just kind of reiterates that last point again. Uh, um, here we have a number of, of spray dryers that are uh, at the smaller scale um, custom built, and then at the larger scale um, commercial units, mostly from Nairo, but with some uh, with some modifications. Um, but but you know across the our development facilities and, and GMP manufacturing facilities, you know you can scan the range from small milligram type quantities to be used for formulation screening, um, formulation testing, uh, stability, you know, predictive stability analysis, et cetera, through scale up, um, you know, on the gram to kilo scale, and then, and then uh, GMP production at the kilo to uh, metric ton scale. Um, and we have produced um, many metric tons of, of uh, a late phase three, uh, SCD for late phase three compound in the past in our, our GMP facilities. So, um, our equipment uh, that we have at Ben Research uh, kind of covers the scale, and, and there is certainly other um, CMO equipment um, that is available in the industry that, that, that covers uh, large scale and, and even in some cases larger scale yet um, than what we have here on GMP facilities. So it's a very scalable process and, and one that can be used to, to, to take compounds um, through clinical development and, and ultimately to commercial, uh, to commercial launch. Uh, this slide just kind of shows some of the historical experience that we that we have here. So, if we think back to the uh, back to that outline slide, we kind of had again manufacturer performance stability. So, um, kind of on the performance aspect now, this slide kind of shows some of the historical experience uh, that we have here uh, formulating with spray dry dispersions. And um, you can see large number of compounds, um, you know, that we've assessed and formulated. In animal studies, um, over 50 compounds um, in a range of, of um, earlier to later stage uh, clinical studies, including um, late phase three clinical studies. And just a, a few examples in these plots on the lower left here of, of um, the exposure increase that is, is typical to see um, for a well formulated STD compared to, say, a crystalline drug comparator or, or even a soft gel uh, in one case here. So you see examples of a few. Um, uh, increased exposure in clinical trials there. And then, um, again, just some representative examples in, in animal studies, um, uh, a small number of them that, that again, show, you know, kind of the, the increase in absorption is typical. And, again, this comes back to the increased solubility, rapid uh, dissolution in the intestine, and then, and then maintaining that high solubility um, by preventing, say, precipitation and crystallization in the intestine. Um, the technology, is, as I kind of mentioned, is, is broadly applicable uh, to a large range of, of chemical compounds or chemical space. There's a map here on the right. Um, it kind of shows that, and I think I'm going to talk uh, more on, on this next slide about it. But the point is, is this is just a, a smattering of a, a number of the compounds, not all of them, that, that um, we have formulated here in SDDs in a, in a kind of simplified representative, representation of chemical space. And you can see they're, they're, they're kind of distributed all over the map. Um, there. So uh, that same map is shown on this page, and I'll go into it in, in more detail. And, and this is kind of a, a place where we bring um, some of the both experience, empirical experience, as well as kind of fundamental scientific understanding of, of dispersion technology to, to bear in, in formulating um, properly and, and quickly with, with the minimum of, of time and cost. So um, one of the ways we do that is, is the use of, of some of these kind of maps, um, which again, uh, what we have is in this plot is kind of a simplified version of uh, drug chemical space. Uh, and so the x the x axis is lipophilicity or log p, and then the y axis is, is um, effectively the driving force for crystallization. And, and what it is is the ratio of the melting point over the glass transition temperature, um, which is the, the thermal transition that uh, amorphous solids go through. Um, and, and the ratio is in Kelvin. That's important to note. So if one were to try to use this map themselves, you'd, you'd want to make sure you were using your your, um, your temperatures in Kelvin and not Celsius. Um, and, and this map and, and uh, an explanation of, of this and, and, and related topics, um, quite a few of which I'm, I'm discussing here, were, were actually covered nicely in, in this paper in 2008 um, that's referenced at the bottom. This was written by a number of um, current and former uh, Bend Research and, and Pfizer employees. So you can you can read some more about it there and access um, this map there. But uh, 
again, we use this map and others like it to, to sort of select in an early stage as, as a paper exercise, even after a number of um, uh, basic physical chemical property measurements on the drug, which we can do or our clients can do. Um, and we sort of map the compounds out and, and, and can be pretty predictive about the types of formulations that are going to succeed. Um, so if we look at the map, um, uh, again, the driving force to crystallize the T over TGs on the y-axis and, and lift the force to your log E on the x-axis. So up in the upper left-hand corner of the plot, you have very, very crystalline compounds, high, um, very high melting point, um, strong driving force to crystallize. And, and they can, they can be limited in, in uh, well, the challenge is, is, as it says, preventing them from crystallizing, of course, out of the amorphous uh, state. And so as such, typically, um, we, one has to operate at fairly low drug loading or low drug to polymer ratio kind of formulations. Um, completely other regime of the, the plot on the lower right-hand corner of the plot, we see extremely lipophilic compounds, um, but at fairly low drug force to crystallize. Sometimes these are even oils at room temperature. Um, have a different challenge, which is, is due to their extreme lipophilicity, um, uh, you can have difficulty getting uh, rapid dissolution rate even when combined with the polymer. So for that reason, those also typically we have relatively low um, drug loading STDs, or sometimes we even go to, to nanoparticles or some other technologies. Uh, and then kind of more in the middle of the plot, you have a little more um, moderate uh, lipophilicity and, and propensity to crystallize, and so often that you can get a higher drug loading. Um, so this is, this is one map that we use, and, and we, we have a number of others that are, are kind of mentioned um, on the left-hand side of the, the slide here. And so we can use these, again, to select kind of a limited number of formulations that we will screen um, from which to select uh, a lead formulation. So we're not screening 20, 30 formulations. We're screening more like five. Um, and from them, selecting a formulation, again, that, that has acceptable performance, stability, and, and um, you know, the, the expectation for uh, streamlined manufacturing. Um, I guess one more thing to be said about this map. Um, you see the kind of upper right-hand corner of the plot there um, is, uh, is off the charts, if you will, or, or when this map was made, we thought there were no such thing. Uh, as those compounds, we, we've since um, discovered that uh, uh, medicinal chemists are, are a more and more enterprising lot, and in fact, there are compounds that are, are we've, we've been presented with that are, are off the map here in, in that they have um, as high or higher log feed than what's shown here, and, and actually fairly high melting point as well. So. Um, as one of my colleagues said, people have, chemists have figured out how to make uh, bricks out of grease, which is, is interesting that, that they're able to make them, and, and they're certainly a challenge to deliver. But, but um, we have seen a number of those, and in fact, been fairly successful um, even in that region of space. Um, so things are always evolving. Um, but again, the, the, the main point of this is, is that uh, we use things like this to, to, to be fairly predictive, even as a paper exercise, about, about what's going to work well. Um, then obviously you go to screening the formulations uh, and testing them to, to see which, which ones look the best. So 